Well, welcome back, folks. We've got a special guest for you tonight. Mr. Frank DiGambliano is here. Frank, it's good to doing, have Frank? you here. Thank tonight. you for having me. It's my pleasure. Yeah, that's great. You know, I heard you had something happen to you when you were a young uh, boy. Why don't you share that story with sure, us? Sure, I, I love to share that story. See, once when I was young, I found a pickle. A pickle? Yeah, I found, I mean, I literally found an abandoned pickle by the side of a little trail. Hmm. Now, as a boy of 12, this confused me. I mean, who abandons a pickle? You know, shouldn't, shouldn't there be some sort of agency to protect pickles from such horrific and uncaring behavior? Well, you'd think so. Yeah, like the SPCP, Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Pickles. I, I mean, I don't know, but there was no such agency at the time. So I did what any normal boy of 12 would do on acid, and that's uh, I, uh, I took the pickle home and named him Louie. Louis. Yeah. And we became best friends. I mean, Louis was my guy, you know. I, I used to put him on a leash and walk him around like he was a dog. Yeah. Now, I stopped the whole walking thing pretty soon after I started because he would lose little pieces of his pickle skin. Mm -hmm. And occasionally he'd get drugged through some dog crap. So it was, it was not a good thing, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Louis and I, we were tight, you know. I once enrolled him in night school. Oh, really? Yeah, but the best he could do was like a C average. Oh. But I didn't care, because I didn't love Louis for his intellect. Oh. I loved him for his other awesome traits. Mm. For example, let me tell you, he was docile. Oh. He never bit anybody. I bet. I know, but I, I could tell some people had bitten him. <laughs> you know, it was really, it was really sad. Ooh. Also, he was quiet. Not like those damn dogs or birds or other loud, obnoxious animals that people think are great pets. No, Louis was different than all of them. He was great. One day, I took him to uh, school for show and tell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's my friend, right? So I took him, I stood up there in front of the whole class, and I wanted to tell them about my friend Louis and what he meant to me. Oh, sure. And as I started to do that, the kids started laughing like crazy. Oh, you're kidding. No. Even the teacher, Mrs. Johnson, laughed so hard that some stuff shot out of her nose. Oh. You know, and at first I, I thought she was an ally because the stuff was the same color as Louie. Oh. <laughs> but no, but no, you know what? She was laughing harder than the kids. Oh, wow. So you know what I did? What? I picked Louie up and I threw him at her face. No. I did, I did. Now, you know, remember I told you he, I found him by the trail, right? Yeah. I think he was at that trail for like three or four years oh. because he was dried out. <laughs> so when he hit her in her forehead, he broke into a million pieces. Oh, no. oh. And, and, and Mrs. Johnson fell to the floor unconscious. And I gotta tell you, Frank, at that moment, I realized why Louie and I met. We met because we were destined to whack Mrs. Johnson in the face. Oh. <laughs> I'll never forget you, Louie. Well, folks, that was a great story, Frank. Uh, we'll be right back after this short commercial. Stick around. Oh, yeah. 